Welcome to Monday Morning Critic Podcast. Here is Derek Thomas. You know what my dad told me last night? He said that you got a full ride to Kansas. You just quit. Why? My father didn't like me very much. And then someone told him I was good at basketball. And he paid a lot more attention to me. And I realized it wasn't me that he loved. It was what I could do. I spent a lot of time hurting myself, trying to hurt my father. I never picked up the basketball again. I need a new coach, Jack. You're the first person I thought of. The team any good? No. <laughs> In fact, the last time they made the playoffs, back when you were playing. It's the whole team, 10 kids. I want to know why they're leaving you open. It's because they don't think you could hit the ocean from the beach. Oh, oh snap. Heard you're coaching basketball. Keeps my mind off other things. You don't decide the game. The players decide the game. I understand you're trying to motivate the team, but we have a code of conduct. Oh, oh shit. I'm working on it. Work harder. This team is not as bad as its record. We have to trust each other. We have to have faith. I just want you to be happy again. But you gotta want it too. Don't underestimate the impact you can have on them. You got this. No, don't just nod. I wanna hear your voice. Yes or no? Yes, coach. You're nervous. I get it. The truth is, they're more talented than you. Probably got a better coach. But I promise you, they are not a better team. Because they haven't been through what we've been through. They don't know adversity. They don't know what it's like to get knocked down and have to get back up again. They don't know what it is to fight. Who are we? We can't change the past, Jack. What we can do is choose how we move forward. My next guest performance as Kenny Dawes, number 11 in The Way Back, directed by Gavin O'Connor and starring Ben Affleck, is easily one of my favorites of 2020. Please welcome the very talented Will Ropp. Will, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Hello, thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm man, I'm so, I am so, I am like, your performance moved me beyond belief. I'm going to get there, but I think you have a story before this movie because you certainly have an interesting life. I mean, I, I've... I read where you were born in Connecticut, lived, you know, I want to say right up until 16. I live, near, I live in Massachusetts, so obviously you were bordering Connecticut. What part of Connecticut did you uh, grow up? Where did you grow up in Connecticut? Uh, I grew up in Darien, Connecticut. So I, um, I was there until I was about uh, 16, and then I went to boarding school in Florida. Oh, okay. And how did you like Connecticut for the time you were there? It was good. It was, uh, you know, I, I, I had some great friends there, and I... Uh, I really focused on baseball growing up. Like baseball was kind of my thing. Right. Um, baseball and theater. Like theater always kind of took the background baseball while I was growing up. Um, and it was kind of once I went to boarding school in Florida that I realized that like Florida baseball is different than Connecticut baseball. <laughs> and right. I slowly realized that me, my future in baseball is not going to, not going to pan out the way I, I wanted it to. And so that kind of was a blessing in disguise and kind of put theater in the forefront um in the front seat and uh yeah from there i went to the university of michigan and yeah no but connecticut was great um i love it and i still have so many friends there and i and i try to visit as often as possible yeah and you know new haven uh, new haven is the king the, the the king city for pizza i think in the united states i mean i, I, <laughs> I mean i didn't know that yes oh my god the, yeah it's phenomenal but that's neither here nor there but i have to say so the school you, you're talking about in Jacksonville, Florida, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, was it called Bowles? Do I have that correct? Yeah. yeah Bowles, and, yeah. And that's where you kind of, I mean, you, you have a teacher, I want. To, I hope I have this right, you have a teacher named Laura Rippel, do I have that name correct? Yeah, Ripple, Ripple. Ripple, and and she really kind of says, you know what, this kid can act, and, and, and she's not saying <laughs> it to you. She's not saying it to you to like make you feel better or give you something to do in your off time. She's saying it like you can make a living doing this. Like you're this, you're that good. So that had to mean a lot to you. And just talk a little bit about that moment in your life, if you would, will. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, Laura Ripple was, uh, you know, my she's my 
probably the first person that told me, yeah, as you said, that I could, you know, I asked her genuinely, like, do you think I could do this as a profession? And she gave me a genuine answer and said yes. Um, and so I, I always respected her for that and always will. And, and we did so many shows together in, uh, in high school and she just kind of, I, I, I think, you know, like I was saying that baseball is a different level in Florida. Theater is also a different level in Florida, but it's the converse. I think theater gets more funding in the Northeast. So, uh, so when I was in Connecticut, I was used to these huge productions and these, you know, uh, you know, a ton of talent in the theater department. And then I went to Florida and it was kind of like, it was, it was more, it was just a little less funded, just, you know, less people are interested in it. Uh, more people are interested in sports, obviously right. football, basketball, baseball. And, uh, and so I kind of, it kind of woke me up and I was kind of like, Oh, I, I didn't know that not every school puts on fantastic productions. And so in, in a way it kind of opened my eyes a little, um, to, uh, to what, you know, to where I kind of sat in the, in the pecking order talent wise or, you know, whatever. And, uh, yeah, from there she, <clears throat> she kind of got me ready for all my college, um, acting auditions, I uh, I applied to be a, a BFA acting major in school, and in order to to do that, you have to um, prepare a bunch of monologues, and it's a, it's a it's a pretty rigorous uh, situation that you have to go through. And she she got me ready for that, and she kind of was was one of my main mentors and encouragers um, that that ultimately got me into Michigan, and you know Michigan ultimately got me where I am. Right, and how did how was your time at Michigan? Uh, I feel like reading about oh, your amazing. yeah, and I feel like reading about yeah. your life. Will there was a couple interviews where there was mention of adversity and tough times. Did you experience a lot of that growing up? Um. Well, my mother passed when I was um, thirteen. Oh, I'm sorry um, to hear that. Yeah, so that was probably you know the uh, probably the biggest adversity I've faced. Um, and you know, I, I I'm one of five. Uh, children so you know my siblings it was you know I'm the second oldest so when something like that happens it's you know tough on a family and it's tough on you know my my father and um so you know kind of us as siblings had to be there for each other and you know kind of rally through it and um and yeah I I think we came out the other end um eventually and you know we'll you know we'll never stop you know I think grieving is a process that never stops so I, I think that'll continue you know continue happening but uh yeah i think that's probably my biggest adversity that's happened so far and um yeah it, it was tough yeah and, and i have to believe she would be so proud of of what you've become the man you've become i mean my god and, oh, thank you yeah and, and <laughs> you know your family in itself i mean i think your mom as well i mean they were all musicians right well i mean these, these are talented people that you've kind of grew up around do i have that part right <laughs> Yeah, well, um, my grandma, Louise, she taught, um, I think she taught choir. She taught choir for like 30 years or 40 years. And, uh, and, and she still sings in her church choir. And, you know, she plays piano. And then my dad played saxophone. My mom played clarinet. My, I, I played trombone. I was kind of a little bit of a band nerd growing up. I played trombone and jazz band and, uh, concert band. I was in chorus as well. Um, and then my sister plays the violin really well. My little brother is a, is a singer-songwriter. Uh, my sister Susie, she's a college lacrosse player, but before that, she played the bass for a little bit. Wow. Um, just a very little-known fact about her. <laughs> People don't know, she played the bass for a little bit. And then, uh, yeah, and then my littlest sister, Lena, we're, we're not sure what instrument she's going to play at, but hopefully something soon. Yeah, and I gotta say, man, I, you know, a lot of times when I when I prepare for interviews, I like to watch other interviews that an actor, a director, a cinematographer has done. And one thing that really impressed me about you, and I loved it, a lot of actors will kind of try to put themselves over first. Um, I think I can't remember the interview, but it was it was about twenty seven minutes. You were with two other um, castmates. I think Charles was one, and I can't remember who the other one was. And you put them over, like you were like. Hey, what, what do you think? Or, or they were great. Like you never made it about you. You always made it about them. And it's so. I mean, and I could tell you're. You, you mentioned family earlier. That's just such a family kind of thing to do, and such a classy thing to do. You were putting them over before you kind of were putting yourself over. I thought that was a really selfless thing. And I don't. I don't see that often. I have to tell you, Will. 
Oh, thank you. Yeah, I mean, and and to be honest, I'm pretty new to the, uh, you know, I didn't start doing these interviews really until uh, until the movie started going into press. So I'm still really new to the whole, uh, the, the press situation, the interview situation. So I think it just, I, I think just naturally, I don't know, I, I hate seeing interviews where one person is like just dominating the, you know, the end of it. And, and especially if it's a group interview, like a round table and one person is just going off. I, I think, yeah, I think it's, I think it's better when you just kind of share the, you share the love and, you know, especially film is such a collaborative experience. It's every single person has, has to do with the, the final outcome. And I think, uh, I think everybody has their own, their own, uh, you know, piece to share and, and to express. Yeah, and I have to say, man, it's just it's just a, a pleasure to watch. And you're one of those people, you know, the, the people use the term old soul. You are definitely much older, mentally anyway, than your age. I mean, you are one of those people that's like, you know, I'm 46 now, Will, and I feel like it's taking me all this time just to kind of get a grasp on life. I, you're a lot younger than that, but I feel like you've kind of had that experience, that life experience with the way you speak. I think that's going to serve you well. That, that's a gift that you have. And um, I'll, Thank I'll, you. Yeah, that's really well done. And I have to say, so I read something where you were a kid, you saw Spider-Man totally moved by Tobey Maguire. Um, is, there any, is there anything else, Will, or any other movies or actors that as you're growing up, as you're younger, that really kind of inspire you outside of Spider-Man that really kind of got the ball rolling? Yeah, I mean... Hmm. There's just so many. I think, you know, I think kind of my, in my, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think, like, to narrow it down. I mean, Leo, I feel like Leo is such a cliche answer a lot, but a lot of the times, but he's just so phenomenal and transforming. Um, I, I like Christian Bale. I think Christian Bale, I, I just rewatched uh, the the Batman trilogy the other day because we're in quarantine. Right. And, and I just, I was like, it is so incredible that they got one of the greatest actors of all time to play Batman, you know, and, right. and in Christian Bale. And that's not a knock on Ben, too. Ben, ben did a phenomenal job as well as Batman. And I think, I, I don't know, I think Christian Bale just really, I saw him in Ford vs. Ferrari and I was blown away. I hadn't seen him do anything like that. And then you see, like, The Machinist and you see, um, yeah, I, I just think, I think Christian Bale's incredible. I also like Dustin Hoffman. Um, I've always liked Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Kind of actors my age, Miles Teller, I really look up to. Um, I think he's phenomenal. Um, Timothy Chalamet, he's he's a force, definitely. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, there's just there's just so many, and there's also so many actresses that that are uh, just so impressive. It's uh, Little Women. I saw Little Women this year, and that, and that just completely blew me away. And just opened my eyes to so many, uh, you know, up and coming actresses. And I was like, wow, this, you know, the game is really changing very fast. Now, Will, when you watch a movie like that, can you enjoy the movie, or are you always kind of studying it as an actor? Are you like, wow, I really love what what Christian Bale did there? Can you actually enjoy it, or or is it more of an analytical kind of thing with you? Mm. I think it's a mixture of both. I think, I think definitely since I've been doing um, acting for for uh, screen um, for film and television, I think it's kind of opened my eyes to the behind the scenes aspect and the you know the way that the the sausage is made, so to speak. It's it's kind of um, yeah, it's 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 difficult. It's kind of like a balancing act. Like sometimes you just kind of have to to just let yourself sit in that movie seat and eat your popcorn and pretend that you're in a, you know, different universe and that, that, that these people are real and that, you know, they haven't played 15 other roles that you've seen and they haven't been nominated for Oscars for other movies that you've seen, you know, it, it, you can't, you just have to think about them in the now and the here and the, and the, and the role that they're doing because they're, because they're going out on the limb and being so engrossed and so, um, you know, uh, so into their role that you have to do their, you know, do them the favor of and respect of 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 being in it as well with them. Um, and yeah, I think I I think throughout the process, it's kind of been. I think I started out like maybe being a little too analytical, but now recently I've kind of been able to be like, oh, I'm just going to sit back and just like enjoy this movie as a film, and you know, I don't have to you know, tear it apart in a hundred different ways and analyze this person's performance or this person's performance or, the, you know, the shock composition or whatever. Like, 
I think I've been trying to just kind of take them in as movies and as pieces of art. Yeah, one of the quotes you had that I thought was really interesting was that many actors will, you know, channel an event in their personal life, you know, to kind of fuel their performance. Um, I thought I read where you, you, that's not something you do, right? That's not, like, you feel like there should be a separation between, you know, what happens. Yeah. With, yeah, so talk a little bit about that if you don't mind, Will. Well, I think, I mean, I, I'm not 100% that way. I think, um, I think that there should be some sort of catalyst um, that can just get you in the ballpark of kind of, of the, uh, you know, the, I hate using the word emotions, but the, yeah, the quote unquote emotions that your that your character is experiencing. But I don't think that um, I think if you're really drawing on on real life experiences and just mirroring them on camera, it's kind of uh, I don't know. It's a little too invasive for me. I think that's um, I think it's an actor's job to kind of create someone new, um, a, a new person outside of yourself. And that's not to say that you as a human being, aren't going to put some of your own authentic self into that character. It can be partly, you know, it can be partly informed on your real life, but I think some of the best actors, they kind of, they just transform and they just kind of, uh, I don't know, they just put a different version of themselves on camera than, than you would see in real life. And I think that's, that's kind of the action that I admire the most. No, that makes sense. I, I, when you said it too, I was like, it's really kind of interesting and, and unique perspective. And, you know, I, I have many actors on the show and I know the roles they do, they have iconic roles, but I got to say, there could not be a bigger difference between Will Rop and Kenny Dawes. Like there could not be a bigger, <laughs> like, 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 you know, you don't know what a person is like until you talk to them. And I was watching some of these interviews. Yeah. I, you know, my, my girlfriend loved your, I mean, you were her favorite, you know, character in the way back, but you know, I have to, yeah, yeah, awesome performance. But, you know, it's it's amazing at how, the. I don't think I've had anyone on the show that's this different from the character they play, but that's that's a good thing. That shows range, that shows what your right. your ability reflects, right? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, and, and it was interesting. Like, when I was on set, I think a lot of my cast mates, too, they were kind of like, how are you, like, before <laughs> we started filming, they were like, how are you going to be this Kenny Dawes guy. Like, you're not this guy. <laughs> and I was like, well, I guess I'll just try and act like Kenny Dawes. You know what I mean? Like, I think, I, I think that a lot of the times people, they're cast because that they are that character in real life. And I, I think one of the challenges of acting is, is, is trying to, or attempting to play roles that is kind of off center of yourself, you know, right. a little, a little to the left or to the right of, of, who you actually are in real life. Right. No, and, and that's well said. You know, and I, and I think that's that leads to a dangerous road, Will, for some people if, if they're the person in real life because I feel like that could lead to, like, typecasting. And it's it's not an, yeah. air, it's not an area you really want to be in. Just from the outside, that's how I see it. Yeah, no, I, and, and I think you don't want to get locked into that. It's kind of like, like if you if you were going to, like, Matthew McConaughey, he kind of, like, he kind of played this one thing this one version of himself for so long, I feel like early. And then finally he, he was like, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to go a little left of center, a little right of center. And he just developed this new, this new frontier in his career. Uh, once he started, you know, going a little more, not like character but a little more uh, outside of his comfort zone. Yeah. I feel like Ryan Reynolds is kind of that guy and he's, he's a phenomenal, yeah. phenomenal actor, but one, you know, I wanted to ask you just to get the ball rolling here, uh, literally. How do you, how do you get involved in this, right? So, do you have to send? Does your agent reach out and say, "Look, Will, we need a tape of you playing basketball. We need a you know a demo reel." Like, how does it right. work? How do you how do you how do you land this part? Well, so um, it was interesting. I had actually heard about the role of Kenny early in the summer of 2018. And I remember being like, oh, I really want to go into this role. Like, it's an Affleck film. Like, I think I can do this role. Um, and I wasn't able to get in the room. And uh, so I was like, kind of bummed out. And then a couple months went by. And then it was August. And they still hadn't filled the role. And my manager called me and was like, do you want to go in for Kenny Dawes? And I was like, yeah. So I went in. Um, I was really nervous because it was my first time going out for the casting director, Wendy O'Brien, who is – now my favorite, you know, one of my favorite cast directors. She's an amazing human being. Right. Um, 
And, and you know, and I was like, I just don't want to screw up for Wendy O'Brien. I wasn't even thinking about getting the role. I was just like, I want to, like, I want to, you know, leave a good impression on this force of a casting director. And um, I remember I, I went in and I just really fumbled the lines immediately. I just was like, I, I, I think I just blanked and I just like completely, you know, messed up. And I was like, I'm, I've completely blown this. And then in my head, I was saying that. And Wendy just goes, no, 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 no. You're going to do this a hundred times and you're going to get this. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. And so that just made me, you know, my confidence shot through the roof. I was like, okay, I can actually do this. And so um, I left that audition, called my manager. was like, I think that actually went pretty well. And then he's like, okay, like, you know, I'll check in. Usually that's, you know, they check in in a few days and see how it went. But on my way driving home, uh, I got a call um, back from him saying that Warner Brothers had already reached out um, asking for a video of me playing basketball. And then he did an ASAP, like by the end of the day, because it was a Friday. And so I drove home, changed went immediately to a court. My buddy, Devin, met me at the court and filmed me just like playing basketball for an hour and I edited it together. I threw on the uh, We're Playing Basketball track on top, the classic basketball song, <laughs> and uh, sent it in. And then that Monday, like literally three days later, was when I uh, met with Gavin. And then Gavin was like, all right, you're going to show up to the scrimmage tomorrow. And I was like, a scrimmage? And I, I show up on Tuesday and it's literally a full gym of like, kids who are really good at basketball and I was like oh I'm screwed there's no way I do this because right. my only job in the film is to shoot three pointers right, right. And, and so I think I took two shots during that scrimmage it was literally just a five on five scrimmage in front of the producers Ben Gavin everyone Amy our sports choreographer and I airballed both <laughs> and I was like oh I'm done there's no way I get this role but then the, I, Gavin just by <laughs> I don't know what he was thinking. He uh, he offered me the role at the end of the uh, practice, and I I just I, I think I just like hugged him. I don't know. <laughs> and, and I got to say, man, because you see, I watch sports movies a lot, and, and I have to say, you watch people in sports movies, and the athletic part is a they don't it doesn't look right. You looked really good. The stroke looked good. I, I never said, "Wow, this kid never played basketball." I totally believed it. So whatever training you did, it clearly worked. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I played a little bit of basketball growing up. Um, baseball was mainly my sport, and I don't, I don't think there's a lot of crossover from baseball to basketball. No, right. Um, but, yeah, so it took a lot of just going to the park with my roommate and jacking up hundreds of threes and trying to get as many to go in. And, and I got to say, you know, I had um, um, Edu Grau, who is the cinematographer for... Um, oh, he's great. Oh, I love yeah, him. Such he would a give good... me a tip every day. He, I would ask him for... Because I'm, a, I'm a very, very interested in filmmaking, and and cinematography and I would ask him for a different tip every day and he would just come up to me and he would tell me like oh you need uh, black in the background and like black is very cinematic <laughs> you know like, <laughs> like you know, he would just give me a different tip every day on how to uh, on, on how to shoot things was, he's so great yeah he's such a unique guy I, I love him and you know one of the things you know we talk about Ben Affleck he's just so beautiful in this film and you know, I've said that this is his best work as an actor. That's just my opinion. I really believe it. I, I hope he gets an Academy Award nod for this. Um, just move yeah. to just move to tears because it does come obviously from a personal place for him. Um, are you overwhelmed? Like, I mean, are there times where you know you're working with him? Are you always picking his brain? Are you asking about other parts he's been in? Do you uh, view it like that, or is it like you know what I have a job to do, or is it maybe a mixture of both? I think I I don't know. I think I, I think we were all pretty. Uh... It was funny. I I felt like when we were shooting, I was like, God, this guy is gonna hate us because we're just a asking him a hundred questions a day. We're just, you know, we we don't give him any relief, and he was just so um, enthusiastically responding and enjoying, you know, giving us wisdom and his thoughts on everything, not just the industry, but just life in general. And yeah, I I, I think I was pretty. I was pretty aggressive and I was like, I'm going to be on set with this dude for 10 weeks. I want to learn as much as possible from, you know, one of the greats in this industry. And, and he, he was so compliant and he was so, he was just such a role model and he led by example too. He was so professional when it came down um, between action and cut, he was just so on the ball. And uh, that, you know, I think as the lead of a film, you kind of have to steer the ship like that. You have to lead by example. Um, and yeah, he just, especially because he's not just a movie star. He's, 
he's a filmmaker, he's a director, he's a writer, he's a producer. And to me, that just put, kind of puts him in another tier. And so I was able to ask him, you know, so many wide ranging questions about shot composition and about, you know, the writing process and the development process and how production companies work, how financing works, all this crazy, you know, all the crazy things that are kind of hidden in this industry that, you know, you don't really get to figure out until you're, you know, at his level. Um, so yeah, it was just such an illuminating, amazing, enjoyable process. Yeah. And I got to say, you know, I got to imagine Gavin does the same thing. I mean, Ben is an award winning you know, Academy Award for writing for Goodwill Hunting, you know, Academy Award winning for, you know, Argo. And, you know, he, he's he's a guy whose brain I think I would pick if I was in your position, too. I think that's a great thing. Yeah. Do, you, do you find yourself, Will, getting lost in the moment? Because he gives two pretty profound speeches in this. Well, he gives more than that. But there's two, especially one at the end to the team and one kind of in the middle about, you know, finding a pair and, you know. Did you ever get lo so lost in, in, in his performance that you're like, Jesus, that that's amazing. I mean, does that ever happen to you? Do you or do you find yourself, you know what, that's, you can appreciate it and still kind of go along with what you have to do? Yeah, I think I don't, I, that's a good question. I think, I think, yeah, there were times when we were shooting that I was like, wow, this guy, he has his full heart in this movie. Like right. he, he was really wearing his heart in his sleeves at certain parts of the movie. And, and, you know, it's interesting when you don't know someone before you start the project, you don't really know like who they are outside of this role. And so I always kind of knew him as Jack Cunningham, the role. Um, and, and then after the movie, you know, he not only, you know, he's not playing the role anymore. He, but he also physically transformed after the role. He, you know, lost a ton of weight, got back into his more like, you know, traditional Ben Affleck physique. And, uh, <laughs> he, it, it, it was, it, it wasn't until then that I was like, Oh yeah, like this is Ben Affleck. This is like a superhero, like leading man. Like, you know, like he, he kind of transformed for, for the way back. And I, and I think throughout the process that was kind of lost on me until after it was all over. I was like, Oh wow. This is like, he, he really was playing, you know, you, he really had a hundred percent of him in this role. Yeah. And, and you know, 10 weeks on a set with Ben and Gavin, I have to, I mean, you have, you have a lot of training in acting clearly, but I have to believe that is the best type 10 weeks with those two guys. I mean, you're learning, yeah. you're, 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 you're obviously giving a great performance and a movie like this really needs Kenny Dawes because it becomes overwhelmingly sad. It could have gone down that road, which, yeah. and it does, but the movie needs Kenny Dawes. It needs that, that every so often, that ref that refreshing, you know, this is a human moment. That, you know, comedy can happen here. So, I mean, that's a big part of your role too, right, Will? Yeah, and I I've always said that I think comedy and tragedy are, you know, one foot away. They're right. the right. It's a balancing act between comedy and tragedy. I think that's what some of the you know the, the greatest uh, were able to uh, accomplish in their work is. Is one minute you know you're bawling your eyes out, and the next minute you're you're bawling from laughing, you know. Right. And that's something that uh, my my greatest uh, filmmaking idols are able to accomplish, and Gavin being one of them. He's he's very good at you know being sincere and authentic, and having a you know gripping dramatic moment, and then the next scene to kind of be like, yeah, just have fun with this. This is like a, this is a human moment where you know everybody knows uh, a Kenny Dawes in their life. You know, just kind of you know run off of it and make it your own. And that, that was also something that I loved about Gavin was that he was so willing for us to, um, kind of make the words our own. That's and kind awesome. of go off the paper a little bit. Good. And I think that just gives, when you're a director, that just gives the, the actors such freedom to make it that much more authentic when you, when you can put it in your own vernacular, you know? So, yeah, and that's well said. One of the things I want to ask you is, so you don't have to say who, but is there a particular person you have in mind when you're, portraying Kenny Dawes like is there a person in your mind you're like this is who this guy is like I know this guy from my life I know this guy because is there a particular person you patterned uh, after or is it just kind of learn as you go you know I think there are, I think it's a combination of people and, and they're not even people from the media or, for, or from like pop culture it's more people that I just like you know grew up with you know up, you know some somewhere along the lines I, whether it was high school or middle school or college, I, you know, you always know those people who are a little bit of a, a playa or, uh, <laughs> you know, a ladies' man, a Romeo. And, you know, you kind of just, 
you, you pick and choose, you pull from, from your, you know, people that you've known in the past. And, and I also think, you know, Kenny was just kind of his own guy. I just kind of, the first time I read the, 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 uh, the screenplay, I just, for some reason, I was just able to envision, I was just like, oh, I know who this character is. Like, I know, yeah. you know, I didn't need to, like, go on YouTube and, you know, look at a bunch of videos of, you know, different different types of characters. I, I think I, I think I just had a vision of who this guy was and how I wanted to do him, and, and uh, yeah, that's what, that's what I did. And he's got a big heart, too, Will. I mean, people, I, I think, see that. Um, are, are you like, you know, there's actors like Adam Driver that can't watch their films, were you happy at the premiere and the final product, you know, once the editing was done, the soundtrack was put in? Were you happy with what you saw? Or are you overly critical about yourself? Or were you just like, you know what, this is, I mean, this is a, your first really major, major film. I mean, this is yeah. huge for you. Um, were, were you pleased? Or can you enjoy it? Or, or are you just kind of critical of yourself? No, I, I think I'm, yeah, I think I'm kind of the opposite of, you know, of Driver in that way. And I, and I respect Driver an actor so much he's so incredible he's he, amazing uh, amazing i saw a q and a of him at uh, after marriage story a few weeks ago and he was just so he's just so smart and yeah. so great but i think i think i'm able to watch the work and it's not even about like watching my own work i'm just you know the way back is such a well made movie and whether it's you know the cinematography or the editing and the music the soundtrack just the the score is so moving, so amazing that I just enjoy watching this movie because I think it's a great movie, and I and it, that's whether I w w am in it or not. You know, obviously I like it more because I'm in it, <laughs> but I I think that if I wasn't in this movie, I think it would still be a movie I'd probably go see a couple times. Like I think I don't know. I, th I think it depends on the project. If it's a project that you're not super proud of or that you think they could have done a better job with. Yeah, you're not going to like seeing yourself on camera as much. But if it's such a an amazing film, and and you can tell that there's love and there's authenticity in the film, you're going to want to see that, you know. And I and I I think I've seen the film, I think seven times in the last two months. And a lot of that's you know we were on the press tour, we had Q and A, so we would have to we would watch the film and then we would do a Q and A after. But then like my sister's lacrosse team at Berkeley, her her whole team. Uh, went to the movie. Oh, very uh, cool, very so I cool. Went with them. Yeah, so it was, you know, I've seen it with different groups of my friends and family, and yeah, I, I've just loved watching it, honestly. Yeah, I saw it twice. I saw it twice in the theater. I bought it this week for nineteen ninety nine on iTunes. I mean, it's one of the best yeah. purchases. Well, so what did your family, you mentioned your sister. What did your family take away from this? Did they, were they obviously, I, I asked if they were proud of you, but I know the answer to that, but were they moved? Yeah. Did you get any in interesting commentary from your family? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I think... I think, um, well, they, first of all, they all came out for the premiere and for the, for the month of the, or for all the time leading up to the premiere, they were just so excited about coming to LA and, you know, going on a red carpet and I was able to have all of them go to the premiere and that was just so fun. And even my grandma, who's, you know, in her eighties and she lives in Jacksonville, Florida and, you know, she, she has no idea what the Hollywood kind of world is like <laughs> it was just very cool to kind of bring her into it and, and just give her like a, a little sneak peek of of uh of, of what it can be like and and i think everyone was i think everyone was proud of me i hope i hope that everyone was proud of me i think um i think my dad's very proud of me uh and you know all my siblings came out and yeah it was just so fun and it was so fun seeing them actually enjoy the movie. You know, like it's one thing when it's like a, a small little movie that no one's going to ever see and it doesn't turn out too well and they kind of have to like smile through it and be like, oh yeah, you were great. It was a good movie. <laughs> I I, can, I I hope at least that they genuinely, you know, enjoy this one because I think it's, uh, I think it's worthwhile. And can we talk about the best cameo maybe in movie history by Dan Loria, the dad in Wonder Years makes a little cameo in this movie. Like, one of the best. <laughs> no one's talking about that. Like that's Dan Loria. That's the dad from Wonder Years. What a legend, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess I didn't even think about that until uh, until now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I I did not. I didn't even. I didn't even realize that. So you guys have like this. I have a few more questions, man. Thank you so much for giving me all this time. Yeah. Um. So oh, you you have you have a, a good rapport with Ben. I love the rapport that Kenny Dawes has with. With uh, with Jack during the movie, I think it's phenomenal. But you get a chance to go on Ben's jet, and this is when I read this, I almost 
cried again. Um, he gave you guys personalized framed jerseys. Is that correct, too? Yes, I'm looking at it right now. It's on my wall. It's a Bishop basketball jersey. It says, uh, Will, it's been fun, Ben Affleck. It's pretty awesome. Wow. <laughs> now you'll be giving that to me, correct, Will? Yes, yes, for, uh, for a pretty penny. <laughs> so how was the Jet experience? I mean, I know Ben's a, a good blackjack player. How did you enjoy all that? Oh, it was, he's just so, he's so fun to be around. He, uh, yeah, I mean, going to, uh, to Vegas was very fun. Um, he, you know, we were, we had a great time. We, I think it was one of the time cause we had just finished the film. It was kind of like a, a rap present in a way. And, uh, we were all just at that point, we were just so, we were so connected. We were such a family by that point that it was just so fun to experience, you know, a trip with with all your you know your best friends and we're all still super tight and you know we still talk every single day and in our group chat and we you know we're we're boys and I think we're I think this this process kind of made us family family for life I hope and uh, you know Ben we, was just so willing to be the, the mentor and leader of, of the group and uh, you know I hope uh, the relationship continues for you know. For a while. Yeah, and I feel like the, during many of your interviews, like the hosts keep insisting this isn't a sports movie. This is, well, it is a sports movie, but it's also the primary story is about a man struggling with an addiction. But yeah. it is certainly a sports movie because the team part works for you guys. Um, the yeah. but before I let you go, the only thing I, a bone I have to pick with you is you called Michael Jordan, LeBron, the best players of all time. I think it's Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. I have to let you know that. Really? Yeah, I mean most people. I mean, I who did I say? I said LeBron and You and said LeBron and Michael Jordan, which most people would probably agree with you on. I think yeah. it's bird and magic. Um last question. So interesting. Yeah, so is it true and, and this has been in a couple of interviews, I just thought it was really funny. Did does Charles who plays Chubbs, did he really approach Ben about stepping on his lines? <laughs> yes, that's hundred percent true. That uh it was one of the first scenes we shot. And he, I forget what, he had some, it was a small line. I think it might have been one word or something. And Ben just kept, you know, unintentionally kept coming in early and, and cutting him off. And Charles went up to us in between takes and was like, hey, man, like, do you think I should tell Ben, like, that I have a line there? I'm like, dude, you're going to go tell Ben Affleck that you don't want him to step on your line. And he's like, he's like you know what, man, I'm going to do it. And he, he did it. And Ben just, from that point on, it's had tremendous respect for him <laughs> because you know it doesn't matter how big the star is, how big the celebrity, whatever. Like it's your it's it's art, and it's your art, and it's your job, and you have just as as much of a right to to get your line out as he does. So you know, I respect I respect Charles for that. Yeah, you have you have so much more left in the tank. I look forward to your future so much because I got to tell you, I'll, be, I'll one day I will say, I will, and today I'll say, I am so lucky to have you on the show because. There are so many Thank big you. things coming for you, my friend. Is there anything that you wanted Thank to you. promote or get out there, Will? Any? I saw a lot of projects in pre-production, which is always good. means you're busy. Uh, what yeah. do you have on the horizon that you want to talk about? Anything? Um, I have a film uh, that I'm shooting in. It's now, I was supposed to start uh, a few days ago, but it got pushed to May because of Corona, obviously. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to... I don't think the press release has come out yet. That's I don't okay. Think I'm to, to talk about it, but it's going to be a good one. I'm super proud of it, and and when it is released, um, yeah, I'm, I would be super down to, to talk about it. I'm I'm very excited. He is he is the supremely talented Will Rop. Will, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I'm glad it worked out. Thank you.